Hey guys, um, early morning start. Uh, it's around 4 o'clock. I'm uh, hitting the 401 around uh, Aberfoyle. Heading up to Kingston. If you live in Ontario, you'll know where Kingston is. Going north of Kingston on 38. You can hit up some of the mines and uh, road cuttings in the area. Especially I'm looking for Blue Appetite, which I'm hoping to find at the Canoe Lake uh, uh, road cut. I'm not sure if you can see me or not. Just had a really scary incident down by the Guelph uh, line there. My um, windshield wiper blade came off. It's just pouring down and I had to pull over on the side. I couldn't see anything. Fumbled around, finally managed to reattach the thing and I'm back on the road of course. Good news though, uh, it's going to be six degrees according to uh, the weather here. Uh, we're uh, you know, going to have just rain which is way better than snow for rock hounding. So here we are now. We're on the other side of Toronto. I don't know exactly where, but uh, on our way towards Kingston. So heading north on the uh, 38 from Kingston, this is Verona. Um, I've noticed we've been going through the limestone, just beginning to change into marble around here. We're right at the edge of the Canadian Shield. Uh, good place for scarns, and I think that's the first spot we're headed. Uh, I think it might be a scarn. But here's the turn off Desert Lake Road, 19 side road. This is one of the unfortunate realities of being a rock hound in Ontario. The snow, fortunately where we're headed, I'm hoping, well it's vertical, it's a road cut, so I'm hoping the snow hasn't buried it too deeply, so continue on, we're going to turn off on Canoe Lake Road. Here it is guys, Canoe Lake Road, this away. T-junction I guess, that's what it looks like. So I'm not exactly sure um, exactly where the spot is, but it's in a coarse grained um, white calcite, which is what we've got right here. I think it's a little further on, but looking at this calcite right now, I am seeing small, uh, tiny prisms of blue appetite. So what I understood is they're much bigger than what I'm seeing here, but I'll continue on along the road and just see what else pops up. This is obviously what I mean by the coarse grained calcite. I think I'll do a close up for you. So you finally settle on this spot being where the road cut is that will likely be carrying this appetite. Um, there's a layer right here that I'm going to start working on because I can see little tiny spines and crystals. That's about the best evidence I've seen thus far of blue appetite. Um, I mean blue appetite is kind of a neat little rarity in Ontario. We usually have green. Uh, they were mining it for the phosphate uh, but that was, we were put out of business by uh, the southern United States which found they could extract uh, phosphate from guano. So there's a slightly larger blue appetite crystal, just kind of in cross section, so I'm just trying to chip away, see if we can get underneath it and just see the size of the prism. So I'm seeing a lot of small little prisms, so I think what I'm going to do is just take out a couple of chunks of rock here, take them home and dissolve them in, a, in coke. The calcite will dissolve and hopefully that will drop out some appetite crystals. Hey guys, so I did, uh, I briefly mentioned the idea of using coke uh, to dissolve the calcite. I'm not sure if you understood exactly what I meant by the way, um, in case you noticed him, that's Louis. Yeah. <laughs> um, I rescued him out of a barn, he was going to get trampled by the cattle. I guess he'd been pushed out of his nest as a baby and he was just kind of flopping around down in the straw and for some weird reason the cattle the cattle hate pigeons. They, they, they want to headbutt them or stomp on them or whatever. So I grabbed him and I took him home and we've kind of raised him, but he's kind of aggressive. Like if you put your finger near him, which I won't do, he goes at your finger. He's got a really hooked beak. It's super sharp. He's pulled out all his tail feathers. He's, he's a bird with some issues. But anyway, that, that's Louis. I, I, I diverge from where I'm going here. Um, we're looking at uh, this uh, uh, coarse grain calcite that I'd uh, picked up yesterday. And obviously 329, bought myself a bottle of Coke. Got a free glass with it as well, and it's as simple as this, right? You just take your uh, coarse grain calcite, or generally calcite, put it in a bowl, and pour the coke over it. So here we go. And you let it sit for many days, and sometimes you've got to change the coke up. And uh, because this is coarse grained, I think it's going to dissolve a lot faster, uh, because it's going to get all between the grains, and quickly loosen up the grains, and the crystals are going to drop out. So every so often I'm just going to change that up and uh, you know eventually uh, th this is stuff like if you use uh, muriatic acid or something like that it's, it's really highly toxic. Uh, it damages the, oftentimes the crystals like the appetite and what have you. You can see 
um, it's already eating away. You can see all the bubbling coming from underneath. It'll take several days, as I say, but eventually I'll, I'll make a quick video and show you guys what dropped out of the, uh, of the coarse grain calcite. Hard to video and hammer at the same time. So there's another piece of appetite there. It looks like I'm taking a couple of nice little pieces from the seam, all along the seam here where it hits this sort of flatter rock and then starts going up. So I'm sure people have dug in all along here and extracted crystals, generally with a cross section of about that size. Here we go, guys. Look at this. Look at that. There's the blue appetite I'm looking for. All in the seam here, obviously. So I'm going to be taking this stuff home and doing the old Coca-Cola trick with it. That is beautiful. Way bigger than I expected. I thought it was all going to be tiny stuff. So I'm just kind of chipping away. I'm finding a little bit of uh, mica here. Phologopite mica, I believe it's called. Sort of a bronzy color. There it is, right there. Um, the crystals here, they, they obviously kind of bend and go in deeper. You see the edge of the prism right there. That's the prism edge. Uh, I'm just going to whittle away with my fingers as opposed to using the hammer and so forth and just kind of pick away so I don't damage it too much, see how much I can expose. And then obviously I'm going to take a big chunk of this home with me and put the coke to it. So, I mean, this is not gem quality material by any means, but it still is pretty neat. It's more like a bluish green and the little tiny crystals are much bluer. So guys, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to extract this stuff without breaking it. So what I'm going to do, I'm leaving it right here. And um, if any one of you turn up, you know exactly where to find it. It's on Canoe Lake Road. Um, the road cutting, you'll see it. Uh, I showed a, a little snippet of it right at the start. And, uh, you know, you're going to find more in this vein. All along here, you're going to find this stuff. Just because it wasn't exposed when I first arrived didn't mean it wasn't here, because people generally take what's on the surface. Okay? I'm leaving that for you. First person to turn up, let me know in the video on one of my one of my other videos that you found what I left for you. It's the spot right here, it's just like a big hump, like a molehill. A pole on top of it. What are you doing? Ah. Doesn't fly too well. Ah, okay. <laughs> he likes to sit on top of my head, but there's obviously a couple of problems that come with sitting on top of my head. Um, <laughs> uh, use your imagination what that might be. And uh, we're hoping one day we can get him to actually fly out of the house and actually do some real pigeon things, and maybe I'll hook him up with my chickens if they're ever going to accept him. <laughs> 